We're into day five of the great computer outage of 2024. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by Amazon Business, focused on offering smart business buying solutions, leaving time to focus on growth. More at AmazonBusiness.com. And by Rubric. When cyber attacks put businesses at risk, Rubric provides the power to bounce back fast. More at Rubric.com. I'm David Brancaccio. We'll start with the latest on the software update that knocked out an estimated 8.5 million Windows computers starting Thursday into Friday. A Texas-based computer security firm, CrowdStrike, acknowledged it was the source of that problem, which affected airlines, government operations, 9-11 emergency calls, and postponed elective surgeries at some medical facilities. This morning, CrowdStrike is facing a deadline from lawmakers in the House of Representatives, and we're getting some numbers on who might pay. Market places. Nova Safo is here with details. The reason the CrowdStrike glitch has taken so long to resolve is that the faulty automatic update beamed to millions of Windows machines requires manual removal. CrowdStrike's efforts to help include a new online video tutorial that, well, let's just say takes a few steps. Type the following. CD space percentage sign. I'll spare you the rest, and if self-help fails, CrowdStrike's advice is... Please reach out to your IT department. Meanwhile, outage costs continue to mount, now estimated at several billion dollars. Fitch Ratings Agency says the insurance industry should be able to handle that, in large part because it won't have to pay most of it. A big reason is that cyber event insurance usually comes with time limits of 8 to 12 hours, not the kind of prolonged global meltdown CrowdStrike caused. Now, Congress wants answers. In a letter, two Republican lawmakers on the House Homeland Security Committee are calling on CrowdStrike's CEO to show up for a hearing. They want a response by the end of business tomorrow. I'm Nova Safo for Marketplace. Thousands of flights were canceled beginning Friday amid the outage. Yesterday, it was mostly Delta Airlines still canceling many flights. This morning, the online tracker FlightAware indicates more than 400 Delta flights have been canceled, about 11 percent. Marketplace's Samantha Fields reports on what rights you have if you're one of the many, many passengers who's been affected. Flights get delayed and canceled all the time for all kinds of reasons. Jason Rabinowitz, an aviation industry analyst, says for passengers, it makes a big difference whether the reason was within the airline's control or not. In this case, the U.S. Department of Transportation has deemed the crowd strike incident as a controllable incident. So that means certain protections that may not have applied before do. If your flight was canceled, airlines are required to give you a refund if you don't want to rebook. If your flight was significantly delayed, airlines should rebook you for free and give out meal vouchers. And Tiffany Funk at the travel search site PointMe says if you're stuck overnight, they will typically give you complimentary hotel accommodations. But if you miss a few nights at a non-refundable hotel or miss your cruise, it would be very reasonable for a consumer to expect that they would get some compensation for that kind of situation. But airlines are not required to offer that. Sometimes they will if you ask, but Funk says no guarantees. I'm Samantha Fields for Marketplace. S&P futures are down about a tenth of a percent. NASDAQ futures now down three tenths percent. Stock in General Motors is up more than three percent now in pre-market trading after its spring profits came in this morning much higher than expected with a lot of money coming in off pickups and SUV sales. GM's also speaking positively about its near-term road ahead. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by Palo Alto Networks. Palo Alto Networks delivers comprehensive cybersecurity protection while automating cyber defense to stop threats so organizations can thrive. Learn more at paloaltonetworks.com. And by Schwab, helping people invest in ideas they believe in with Schwab Investing Themes, with more than 40 themes to choose from. More at schwab.com. And by C3 Generative AI, verified, traceable answers, secure, hallucination-free, LLM agnostic, IP liability-free. Learn more at C3.ai. About a quarter of companies in the S&P 500 are set to release their second quarter results this week. Two heavy hitters will publish results late today, Tesla and Alphabet Google. Those are two of what investors like to call the magnificent seven. These companies shake markets, as our Kristen Schwab reports. The Magnificent Seven is, of course, a reference to the 1960s American Western film. But instead of seven cowboys, you've got Microsoft, Apple, Tesla... 
Amazon, Meta, Alphabet, as well as NVIDIA. James Angel is a finance professor at Georgetown. He says they're considered magnificent because together they represent 30% of the S&P 500. So if you have your retirement savings in a nice plain vanilla index fund that tracks the S&P 500, almost a third of your wealth is tied up in these seven stocks. And those seven stocks are a big reason why the S&P 500 has been hitting record highs. Campbell Harvey, a finance professor at Duke, says in the first quarter of this year, the earnings growth of the Magnificent Seven was, on average, 50%. And he's worried about people who are literally buying into that because... A 50% earnings growth cannot be maintained. The recent performance of the Magnificent Seven may skew people's investment decisions. It can also skew people's view of the S&P 500 in general. The other 493 are pointing to a slowing economy. Yet we don't really see it because we're looking at the S&P as a whole. Still, these companies can be a bellwether of sorts. AI and electric vehicles are part of the future. So it's important to know just how many Teslas are being delivered. Or, says Paul Christopher at the Wells Fargo Investment Institute, how many AI data centers are being built? Uh, that's going to take a lot of construction, and it's going to take a lot of materials. All that development can drive growth for other companies. But Christopher warns investors that the Magnificent Seven might not always be so magnificent. Because, historically speaking, the companies that initially innovate are not necessarily the ones that stick around long term. Remember, in the movie... Seven rode in. And only three rode out. I'm Kristen Schwab for Marketplace. Shares of Reddit closed up more than 5% yesterday after what started out as a microblogging site announced deals with big sports leagues to put out sports video content. NFL, NBA, MLB, PGA, NASCAR, licensed clips of sports with attached advertising is the play here. Our producers are Nick Perez, Ariana Rosas, Alex Schroeder, and Erica Soderstrom. I'm David Brancaccio, Marketplace Morning Report from APM, American Public Media.